So this video has piqued my interest because we, uh, well, this is the A7CR, but we're actually going to be talking about the A7C Mark II versus the Alpha 7 IV. Now, the A7 IV is my A camera. Pretty much all these YouTube videos, I've had it literally ever since it dropped. Incredible. 10-bit, 422, 4K, 60 frames per second. It just has incredible image quality, especially with dynamic range, noise performance, and low light. And obviously all that is in the A7C Mark II, but this is what we're going to be comparing today. But we're actually gonna be comparing it from the fact that if you don't have the A7 IV, should you get the A7 IV or the A7C Mark II? Let's get into it. So first of all, when it comes to the price right now, as it drops, it is 3,499 Australian dollars, whereas the Alpha 7 IV is 3,599 Australian dollars. So the recommended retail price, it's $100 less than the A7 IV. So we have to take that into consideration. If there is $100 less specs in the A7C Mark II, or are there more specs that you know, gives it better value? So they both have that 33 megapixel sensor, which obviously is a 7K sensor that down samples to the 4K. So you're gonna get oversampling when it comes to the image quality in 4K, which is going to be great, but we'll talk about the image quality pretty much the end because we have to talk about the ergonomics and the full body design differences between these two cameras first. So a lot of people aren't going to like that A7C Mark II has that 2.36 million dot EVF. I'm perfectly fine with it. You know, it does the job, it gets the job done. But the Alpha 7 IV has that 3.69 million dot EVF, so it does have a higher resolution EVF. It really just depends on if you actually prefer to have a really high resolution EVF or if you don't care. At the end of the day, it's very minimal differences and uh, you only need to compose a shot and just kind of get it done in the EVF. You're not watching movies on it, so... That's my opinion, and I know there are many other people that have other opinions on, you know, how bad the 2.36 million dot EVF is. But when it comes to the other competition with Canon and Fuji, they have pretty much that exact same 2.36 million dot EVF, depending on which camera you actually choose. Now the A7C is that smaller body, and for that fact, when it comes to the ports, it's just got that single SD card slot on the side. So you will actually have to utilize a V90 card if you do want to film, you know, 4K60 in the all I codec. Uh, but the A7 IV has dual SD card slots, and one of those is the Type A card slot. Now I absolutely love the Type A card slots; they are incredibly robust, and they are much faster. So if dual card slots is something that you actually prefer, then the A7 IV obviously is your choice there. And yes, we do have a smaller micro HDMI on the A7C Mark II, as opposed to the full size HDMI on the Alpha 7 IV. Now, when it comes to video work, I know a lot of people prefer the full size HDMI. <coughs> Ah, oh, God, I'm allergic to micro HDMI. And I've been working with micro HDMI for absolutely ages with the A7 III, but I am used to SDI and full-size HDMI, so it just depends on if that is a pro or con for you. Now, they both have that fully articulating back screen, which is amazing. I absolutely love it. I'm not a fan of the old school flip screen, but the A7C Mark I had the fully articulating screen. It was the A7 III that had just that flip up screen. But obviously, since the A7 IV and A7S III, they've been rolling out these newer flip screens in pretty much every other camera. And yes, they both have that Z100 battery as well, which is going to get you a ton of photos and obviously a really long time when it comes to video recording. Now, in terms of the buttons on top, yes, they do have that hybrid switch, which I absolutely love in the A7 IV. So essentially with that hybrid switch, if you have it in video mode, you can have all your video settings and you switch it over to photo mode. It switches to all your photo settings because obviously, you know, we don't want our ISO to be at 800. We don't want our shutter speed to be only only one fiftieth of a second when it comes to photos. We want our shutter speed to potentially be higher. So that is great that you can separate those features. And obviously you can customize which ones you want to separate and which ones you want to actually keep the same in the settings. 
Now the A7C Mark II has the two dials at the back, which is great, and obviously that aperture dial at the front, which is always welcomed. And I absolutely love having, you know, the aperture, shutter speed, and then you can customize this to ISO if you really wanted to as well. Now one of the biggest differences about this one, obviously it is a small body and it has less custom buttons. It only has two custom buttons, whereas the A7 IV has four custom buttons, and that is obviously if you, you know, include the bin as a custom button. So it does say C1 and C2 is the bin, whereas the Alpha 7 4 has C1, C2, C3, and then C4 is actually the bin. So if you are a custom button kind of person, A74 wins there. Now, one of the major ones that I know a lot of people won't like on the A7C Mark II is no joystick. Now, the Alpha 7 IV has that joystick, so if you do like to have, you know, autofocus points and be able to control that, or if you want to zoom in and sort of toggle between it, uh, that is a plus with the a7 IV. It really just depends on your workflow. In my opinion, it doesn't make too much of a difference. There is obviously workarounds and you do start getting used to the whole layout. So it just depends. If you are pretty much someone that's fresh, hasn't used any of these cameras before, you probably won't notice any difference. And lastly, they both have that multi-interface hot shoe. So you can utilize, you know, all your ECM B1M, ECM B10, ECM M1, all those kind of microphones on here without utilizing the cables, which obviously is welcomed. And I'd just like to cut in here and uh, say the A7CR video is coming. So make sure you subscribe, obviously like this video as well, but we're gonna be putting the A7C Mark II against this beast and the A7 IV that you're watching right now. It's gonna be an epic battle. Let's get back into the video. Okay, enough about the exterior. Let's talk about the interiors of these cameras. Now, this is where things get a little bit similar, but then obviously a little bit different too, because this one has that newer AI processor. And uh, that first came, I think, was it the A7R Mark V? Got that AI chip and then the ZV-E1. And what that allows is better autofocusing systems so you can focus on, you know, trains, planes, cars, insects, birds, animals. And now this is a little bit of BTS with the A7CR. Now they have identical autofocus systems between the A7CR and the A7C Mark II. And I've taken some photos and videos of these birds just to test the bird eye autofocus. And uh, it actually does quite well. This was paired with the 50mm f1.2 G Master lens. So it's a brand new lens with the XD linear focusing system. So it definitely will keep up with the brand new autofocusing system. And it works really, really well. It's just a smarter autofocusing system, but that doesn't just limit it there. So you have auto reframing as well. So if you don't know what auto reframing is, essentially, Essentially what it does is it follows you around the frame. You can have three different crop settings and uh, it spits out an image that tracks you in frame. So it looks like you've got a videographer, which is really cool. And obviously the a 74 doesn't have that because it doesn't have that extra AI processor. So this is utilizing that auto frame. And this is gonna be good because this is a 33 megapixel sensor. So when it crops in, you're still gonna get some really high resolution 4K imagery into this A7C Mark II. So now I've got it on the large crop setting and I've also got it uh, a nice sort of slow pace when it's tracking me, but it's gonna be track me inside the frame quite well. And you know, because of that 33 megapixel sensor, it's going to be able to, you know, track me throughout this whole frame, which is really cool. And it makes it look like I've got a videographer in my studio. Now also with most of the newer Sony cameras, it does have that second menu, which is like a quick menu at the top. It's got uh, menu one, menu two, and it has just a whole bunch of settings in there you can quickly go to. It really depends on your workflow, but they are sort of nice if you are new. And uh, you know, cause most menu systems are pretty hectic and you need to dive deep into it because there's so many different settings. Those quick menus can actually be very, very handy. And now they both do have touchscreen, which is great. And you can go through the menu with, uh, with that touchscreen. But the A7C Mark II, you're able to do that swipe up and swipe across and actually get uh, the extra menus on the side, which is obviously a welcomed feature. And there is also one little feature that I know a lot of people like, and if you don't use monitors, you can use M lights, and that's monitoring lights inside the camera. So essentially, if you do want to, you know, have a LUT and put it into your camera, you can have that directly on the S-Log footage and see what it may actually look like. And uh, the a7 IV does not have this. And it's just a new feature that a lot of the new alpha cameras are coming out with. Now, this one does have time-lapse inside, uh, whereas the a 
A7IV doesn't have time lapse inside, but you can switch it over to SNQ and kind of get some time lapse settings, which is kind of cool. Okay, seven stops of Ibis. Yes, I said seven stops of Ibis compared to 5.5 stops of Ibis. Now, when it comes to this footage here, this is just with Ibis, so no active stability on, and uh, it's really hard to tell the difference. It doesn't seem like there is a massive upgrade here. Uh, I mean, you could probably tell that the micro jitters are probably better with the A7C Mark II, but when you actually put active stability on, it's pretty much even playing ground here. Uh, and now we've got to talk about the overheating. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to test one of the most important things, the overheating test. <laughs> so you're gonna have to look at Gerald Undone's video for the overheating test, but that has to be addressed. And uh, you would imagine that A7C Mark II overheats quicker than the A7 IV, but without doing the test, I can't say anything definitive but I can say that most likely the A74 is going to be better when it comes to uh, heat prevention, heat management, and overheating tests uh, compared to the A7C Mark II. And now when it comes to the other features, this one obviously has that variable shutter, which the A7 IV does as well. Focus breathing compensation, which we all know that a lot of G Master lenses have breathing when it comes to video. It compensates for that inside the camera, which is amazing. And focus mapping as well, which is kind of good for getting uh, critical focus on certain things. Now, let's talk about image quality. This one is obviously going to be interesting, but not interesting at the same time because they are at exactly the same sensor. It's a lovely sensor, don't get me wrong. I love the Alpha 7 Ford. It's a 33 megapixel sensor. It gives you 7K that down samples to 4K. So you get really crisp 4K video when it comes to obviously this talking head right now, which is great. The rolling shutter, is okay it's not amazing because you are down sampling but if you do throw it into 4k 50 or 4k 60 it crops in 1.5 times and then obviously it's not as down sampled anymore so rolling shutter is better uh, dynamic range is very minimally less uh, and obviously noise performance is slightly lower but uh, they're going to be absolutely identical when it comes to image quality because they literally have the same sensor. And if you don't know, it has 4K 60 with 10-bit 422 color, which is obviously amazing. And then it also has 1080p at 120 frames per second, but it is 8-bit and just regular codec. You have to go to SNQ mode to be able to unlock the 10-bit codec in that 1080p at 120 frames per second. Now, when it comes to photos, I believe they're identical, uh, 10 frames per second when it comes to raw photos, but uh, the a 4 was 10 frames per second in compressed raw, and then uncompressed raw, it slowed down to six frames per second. I don't, like I said, I don't have the A7C Mark II, and I didn't test that as well, but I would imagine it would be very similar when it comes to that frames per second in burst mode. And look, the image quality when it comes to photos is phenomenal. I had a 33 megapixel sensor. I mean, the 24 megapixel sensor in the previous version was perfect enough as well, but 33 is just that little bit extra and gives you a little bit more room to crop if you really, really wanted to. Okay, now overall, what do I think? This is a tough one uh, because I love the a 4 a lot. The grip is nice. It feels ergonomically fine. Autofocus is brilliant, the image quality is amazing, and the A7C Mark II essentially is the same, it's just in a smaller body, so it's got a smaller grip, uh, one SD card slots, smaller HDMI. There are a few things that I don't like, and that wouldn't suit my workflow. It'll suit obviously a lot of people because a lot of people don't even use, you know, uh, full size HDMI or external monitors. They only use that three inch screen on the back, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, it just really depends on your workflow. But look, if I were to choose right now, obviously the better tech is in the A7C Mark II, but you do slightly get more value out of the A7 IV because it does have a better EVF, full-size HDMI, dual card slots, a slightly bigger body, so ergonomically it could be better for you. It just really depends on your workflow. Do you need everything that's in here or is the A7 IV perfect for you? 
and it's only a hundred Australian dollars difference uh, at the time of the release so it's a tough one to say but uh, hopefully you just watch it back see what features actually you need and then make your decision off that so anyway my friends i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it a thumbs up that would be amazing obviously the a7cr video will be coming but i've got a lot more testing to do with that so stay tuned make sure you subscribe to my channel uh, so you can see that video i'm going to be battling it up against the a7c mark ii and obviously the a7 IV as well so uh thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one all right let's get it